God compares an akazu so that my household can be full. So when a principality brings government, you need another agent to compare people to come. You can build a church but to be empty. You know, Christianity needs to be redefined. We have, we have built religion out of Christianity and patterned ourselves like other religions. That's why our number counts for nothing. The church of the apostles, one man could enter a city and take it over. One man. We are conscious only of earthly things. And so we, our experiences are identical with the experiences of the godless people. The same thing they experience is what we experience. And it ought not to be so. Some of us who grew up and had the opportunity of visiting villages and come, we saw some things. When you go to the house of a sorcerer, the children are learning how to cast spells, how to give herbs, how to do dark, dark, dark science. And we don't know what we should practice. One of the things you should preoccupy yourself with is how to manifest the life. There are times when you are learning how to transmit healing through your palm. Those are the things that we should do. There should be times when you are learning how to change things with your words. And so for a whole month, you are watching the weather. And you, you build your faith and consciousness. And you are talking to weather. Trying to utter the weather. That's Christianity. So that in the day where it is necessary, you can show up and bring deliverance to Jacob. You should learn to wake up and speak to people and change the course of their lives. They tell you somebody is cursed. You say, who is the person? You come and you talk to the person. In three weeks, this and this and this will happen. And you are watching in prayer for that thing to happen. When it happens to one, two, three people, you now begin to gather people. You start addressing groups of people. That's Christianity. How can you be the, the sort of the earth? How can you be the light of the world when you are the same with them? We don't know who we are. You should know, learn, see, you should talk to things and they obey you. And then you become famous in it. So businessmen will call you and say, please, this Saturday, we don't know if you can talk to 25 of us. You say, wait, I'm coming. You show up. And you talk to the business. All of you who are into real estate, I decree and declare, the land opens to you. Begin to possess. And you are watching. After one month, all of them become landowners. Even they we know that this land, we got it by power. Christianity is not come to church, sing, dance, pray and be excited. No, we are the sort of the earth. When we master this, then the world can give us attention. That's when we will teach them the principles of the kingdom and we refine their minds. That's why Jesus said, signs before teaching. These signs shall follow them that believe. If you don't demonstrate signs, nobody will hear you. Check the apostles out. They enter territories, demonstrate wonder, and they sit them down and train them. And we want the world to hear us when we have nothing to show. Something is wrong. See, master eternal life. Train yourself. Because eternal life speaks. If that life becomes active in you, it may tell you in a whole month, meditate, study, study. Because the life needs energizing. And as you study, study, you will hit a crescendo. The life will want to come out of you. You are driving in a bus. Somebody has an accident. That life will tell you, touch his knee. Hold his knee quickly. Hold his knee quickly. And you will rush and hold it. Now it's the life that is regulating you. And you will see wonders happen naturally. There are times when that life will tell you, pray, pray every day, pray. If the time comes to pray, you will lose your peace. Because the life is feeding. And when you feed that life, after a while, things will begin to happen that will marvel you. People will have accidents. You just see yourself walking on the road. You won't know what happened. The life has become a whirlwind. But we don't know what to give attention to. So Easter is not another religious celebration. This is the date that Jesus rose from the dead. No. It's an awakening of our heritage in God. And one of it is life. The third blessing.
blessing of Easter is not just the life, it's the victory that the life brings. And I've shown you already, victory over death, victory over circumstances. When that life comes, it gives you victory. Things don't die in our hands. It's not pride. This is who we are. Even if it's failing, if we become a part of it, it starts working. And there are testimonies to prove it. Things don't die. When we talk, things happen. Because the life gives us victory over death. John 11, 25, I'm the resurrection and the life. They that believe in me shall not die. And even if they were dead, they will live again. John chapter 6 verse 40. He said, even on the last day, he will raise us up from the dead. That's why the grave can't trap us. There's a life we carry now. It's on the strength of this that he says, absence from the body is presence with the Lord. A Christian is not afraid of death. Death has been conquered. The Bible said, we should not mourn like those who are hopeless. No. For us, we don't die. We sleep in the Lord. And when time is accomplished, we will rise again with him. Why is that possible? Because of the resurrection. He said Jesus died and rose from the dead as a first fruit to them that believe on him. So God did it to show us that the same will be our testimony. And Paul was speaking, he said, at the end of time, at the last trump, he said, they that died in Christ will rise again. And he said, we who are alive, in the twinkling of an eye, we shall be changed. Blessedness of the resurrection. It produces faith. It produces life. It produces victory over death, over circumstances, over Satan. Listen, God is not healing Christians only. God is not delivering Christians from demonic oppression. That package exists because of mercy. What God is doing with Christians is living in divine health. If God has to heal us, he does that because we are too infant in understanding and his mercy won't let us remain there until we grow up. So healing is an intervention. But God's plan is divine health. In third John verse 2, he said, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. Not healing, in health. Is that third John verse 2? I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health. So what God is doing is keeping us in health because the life we have will not allow us for sick if we are conscious of it. God is not delivering us. Our ignorance is what keeps us in demonic bondage. And because of his mercy, he has to allow us to be delivered. But that's not his package. His package is to live in a realm where you dominate demons. In Colossians chapter 1 verse 12, see what Paul said. We have already been delivered from the dominion of darkness. We are not supposed to be delivered. We have been delivered. He said, giving thanks to the Father which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Verse 13. It says, who had delivered us? He's not delivering us. He has delivered us from the power of darkness. And he didn't just deliver us from the power of darkness. He made us to sit together with Christ in heavenly places. Ephesians 2.6, Ephesians 1.21 Far above principalities and powers. When God has to deliver us, he pains him that we are still at that level. Because the package available to us in the resurrection is victory over devils. We should be casting out demons. Not demons being cast out of us. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. Demons fear us. They tremble when we show up. But when a Christian is in ignorance, the devil can still manipulate and dominate him. This is why you must hear the gospel. When you have not heard the gospel, a deliverance minister can come and pray for your healing, pray for your deliverance. But when you know the gospel, you don't need one anymore. And so when you find churches filled with people waiting for deliverance, it's a testimony that gospel has not been preached. I 
And meanwhile, we have made fame out of deliverance. We have made fame out of praying for the sick. In church. I'm not saying these things won't happen. It happens because they are still babes and ignorant Christians. But that's not God's plan. God's plan is, if somebody told a story. He invited an evangelist to E.W. Kenyon's church. And I'm praying that one day we'll come for meetings here. Nobody will be sick. Nobody will need deliverance. That's the proof that the church is maturing. They came to E.W. Kenyon's church. And the guy preached. He sensed the anointing. He made declaration. He said, if you are sick, come. Nobody stood up. Ah, what do you mean? It has never happened. Sickness is obey me. They said that's true. But there's no sickness in here. Here, people are not sick. He taught them the word. Everybody could handle the word. He W Kenyon's thought. They say you don't die until you are above 70. If you die, he will wake you up. Come back here. Where are you going to? We have authority over the grave. E. W. Kenyon could talk to bones, literally. That was the first man that started talking to bones. And bones responded graphically. And there was no teaching about any special anointing. It was about the word. The word. Those days they said, if you come to his parlor, the Bible is open. Go to his bedroom, the Bible is open. Go to his bathroom, the Bible is open. And that's what he taught everybody who was a member of that church. Every second they are reading a verse. And they are talking it to themselves. So they were cooked. They were walking in the reality of the gospel. Listen, we celebrate healing in church. Because we thank God for his mercy. But that's the wrong thing to celebrate. What we should celebrate is divine health. That in this church, in the last 10 years, nobody has been sick. In the last 10 years, nobody died. Why? Because when sickness comes, they know what to do. If that same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he quickens your mortal body. So when somebody sees a growth, he's not waiting for a miracle service. Keres, Kapira, Bakatonia, growth, go down. And the growth will go down. If somebody feels a symptom of sickness, all he needs to do is to enter his room. And he meditates on scripture. Talk scripture to himself. Pray. When he's charged, he commands the sickness to go. And it's a normal routine. But today's elders that fall sick more than everybody. And when you talk, they say, my brother, we are human beings. So let's not deny our humanity. So should our humanity dominate our divinity? Was Jesus not human? The Bible said, if anyone sick among you, let them take him to the elders. Today the elders are sick. Listen, I'm not saying there are no people who are attacked by demons. Sickness can be a warfare. And every one of us is fought from time to time. But what I'm saying is, there should be zero level tolerance for demonic oppression. And everyone should be fortified to be able to raise a war of defense against Satan. In resurrection, we have victory over death. We have victory over sickness. We have victory over demonic circumstances. Because we know who we are. Anything that can subdue Jesus has no right to subdue you. But the question is, do you know you are risen with him? Do you know? The blessedness of the resurrection. Today, if a doctor tells a Christian, ah, he will die of hypertension. They have not even told you the diagnosis. The doctor just shows up and is nodding his head. Say, Kai, this time, this thing, Kai. And the, the heart will jump out of the chest because the doctor's verdict is the voice of God. See, we need to make up our minds to believe the gospel and to practice it. Smith Wigglesworth and his wife entered the covenant and they told themselves from today no doctor's report here from today no medication the word of God becomes our medication and they were not waiting for sickness before they meditated they started chewing the word every day chewing the word so sickness didn't come a rugged generation need to rise but it takes revelation for that generation to be born it's not just to put flyers on the internet and start shouting his reason his reason what is the proof in your life are you walking in faith are you walking in the newness of life 
are you walking in the victory that is that produces if not you don't know what it is you have just joined a trend and trust me christianity is not about trends it's about modeling god it's about demonstrating divinity to a generation that is in lack of the revelations of god they say you are a choosing generation a royal priesthood god's own special people called forth to showcase the excellency of god i'm sparing up your faith because everything we tolerate we give authority to dominate us you must come to that point where you say no to satan no to sickness no to every negative thing orchestrated by demons and then you take the word of god and stand on the word see how your life will change these things are not are not cunningly devised fables peter said we have not believed cunningly devised fables when we spoke to you about the coming king he said we were eyewitnesses of these things he said we were with him when he received the excellent majesty he said but we have a more sure word of prophecy it is written they banked their lives on it he said no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation holy men of god spake as they were moved by the spirit of god isaiah said search ye out of the book of the law and read he said none of these things shall fail the mouth of god has spoken it his spirit has gathered it these are things gathered by the spirit of god he said to the law and to the prophets him that speaketh not according to this word has no light in him we carry so much light that's why we say what the word say and we experience what the word experience what the word says to a spirit the fourth blessing of the gospel is that you are made an heir of salvation you are an heir of god you are not just delivered you are not just called to live in victory you have become an heir of the kingdom that means the jealousy of the kingdom is your defense that means the wealth of the kingdom is your possession that's one heir is we are heirs of god Ephesians 2 verse 6 Romans 8 17 and he has raised us together and made us to sit together with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus everything is together 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 we go in here with Christ we share with him now so everything that is Christ is ours that's why Romans 8 17 it says if you are children then you are heirs and heirs of God joint heirs with Christ if you follow in the travail of the gospel so that you are glorified with him so right now we are heirs but we'll be glorified in eternity if we walk with him in his travail but now we are heirs of God now we are heirs of God not tomorrow everything that belongs to Christ is yours and Jesus said we are his brethren because we have come to co-heir the possessions of God. You don't know what the gospel made available to you. A Christian becomes so proud when he gets a car. Or when he has few months notes in his account. His confidence is in mundane things. No. That's not what gives a prince audacity. A prince has audacity because of his status in the kingdom. I'm an heir of God. Things are a byproduct. My confidence is not in anything because I produce all things from my spirit. Things don't make me. I make things. I am an heir. That's who we are. But many don't know. Revelation 1 6 is said unto him that washed us and made us priests and kings unto God. He washed us. He made us kings and priests. The wealth of the kingdom is my inheritance. The wealth. This is the consciousness that produces consecration. And this consecration produces the results. But many don't know. We make religion out of things that are supposed to be realities. And not just realities, but realities that impact on existential things. You are not an orphan. You are not a hopeless man. You are not a useless stranger, wanderer, hoping to succeed no you are a prince of a kingdom you are an heir of a kingdom and the greatest kingdom they ever is for that matter become aware so that you can access your blessings in zion yeah yeah 
Yeah. 